Have you ever had a friend in grade school and then one summer rolled around and when it came time to come back to school, they must have gone through a makeover and they were a completely different person. That's exactly how I feel about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. It seems like very familiar in some ways, but in other ways, it's very, very different. So today I'm going to delve into the good and the bad of this game. So let's waste no time and get started. First thing, the gameplay and the graphics feel absolutely great. Everything is a pleasure to look at. There's a lot of new characters in this game, a lot of new abilities, a lot of new mechanics, a lot of new concepts. Everything looks fresh, everything feels fresh. If you were kind of bored of the Borderlands formula and you felt like it was getting stale, this is gonna be a good game for you. Along with that, if you are a Dungeons and Dragons fan, this is an absolute must play, especially if you're a fan of both Borderlands and Dungeons of Dragons, because that's what this game is all about. There's so much love to D&D, there's a lot of humor, there's a lot of mechanics straight up from D&D. So speaking of that, this game introduces spells and it also introduces melee weapons. I really enjoyed both and I actually enjoyed the melee weapons the most. It was super cool to actually feel like you can level up your melee attack and it wasn't just useless in the late game. Like I feel like it was in most of the Borderlands games. So that was a really good creative touch. Now speaking of creativity. If you enjoy mushrooms in any capacity, whether that's food or any other way at all, you're going to love this game. Whoever made this game was clearly a big fan of mushrooms. There are mushrooms everywhere. There's a lot of mushroom enemies. There are mushroom companions. There's mushroom abilities. I'm sure there's even mushroom weapons. So can't stress enough, if you enjoy mushrooms, lot to laugh at with this game. Now, speaking of laughing, there's a lot of really good Easter eggs in this game. I can't stress enough how great the humor is. This feels like they kind of made a huge step forward from Borderlands 3. Not to say that the humor was bad in Borderlands 3, but this is light years better. This feels like it is. it got back to what we know and love. So I had a blast just kind of laughing at a lot of the references, the parodies. And speaking of that, the side quests in this game are really impressive. There's a lot of side quests that are parodies of movies, stories, things like that. And it also really feels like a homage to almost Borderlands 1 and 2 in that sense. Along with that, there's a lot of good side missions that have AI companions, and that feels really good, where they kind of follow you around throughout the mission. And they're also able to revive you, which I enjoy as a solo player. Another thing that I appreciate about this game is the map is improved. Now the physical map when you press start is improved. That was one of my biggest complaints about Borderlands 3. For some reason, this just looks a lot easier to look at. I also think one of the reasons it looks easier to look at is because this game did a way better job of the layouts of the maps. So there's a lot more maps in this game, but they're a lot smaller and right to the point. And I appreciate that. That was one of my biggest complaints about Borderlands 3 as well. There was a lot of open land that was kind of boring to maneuver through. This game also introduced hero stats, which is a new mechanic that allows you to pinpoint certain aspects of your build that you want to focus on. So again, I feel like for RPG and D&D fans, a great inclusion for sure. This game also introduces dual classing once you get the appropriate level and that's super fun. And there's also a lot of good looting opportunity once you hit the end game. The dialogue still drags sometimes, but again, it's a big improvement from Borderlands 3. It does seem like they heard some of these complaints and directly worked on it. So I really do appreciate that. Along with that, we also get some brand new gun varieties in this game and some new equipment varieties. Don't get it twisted. This is not Borderlands 4. This is not the game we're all waiting for to perfect the flaws from Borderlands 3. However, it is a really nice step in the right direction. And along with that, has a lot of really good inclusion of D&D mechanics. So like I said, if you're a fan of the both, you're gonna really enjoy this game. Now it's time to talk about some of the bad things about this game. First thing that I don't really love about this game, and a lot of these are personal gripes, so feel free to disregard these if you're looking at this from a technical standpoint, but I don't really enjoy the gun selection in this game. Some of my favorite things about the Borderlands games are like the technology that the guns have to offer. And this feels like the guns are kind of simple and they truthfully don't feel as powerful as they did in the past. 
especially early early game it's kind of brutal to use these crossbows and pistols and really weak shotguns i do think that they should do a better job of that if they choose to revisit this series along with that the skills don't feel nearly as powerful as they did in the past games it was so much fun to level your character up and feel yourself become more powerful with your abilities and for me it feels like it's lacking in this game Along with that, the addition of the overworld is just a complete no for me. It does not add on to the game at all, and it just takes away. There's also a lot of on-rail sliding in this game that forces you to do it, but it's a little bit clunky, and I've actually died sometimes without even really being able to control it. So I thought that was worth noting. Another thing that I have to complain about is the pacing. So in prior Borderlands games, I would traditionally not do too many side quests throughout my first playthrough, fly through the game, and then my second and third playthrough, address the side quests slowly. That way I kind of had more content to work through but not rush through it. And also the rewards felt more rewarding that way because I was getting them at a higher level. This game forces you to have to do the side quests in order to just get leveled up for your main quest, and in turn the rewards feel useless. This might be a personal thing because I just enjoy the original formula of Borderlands, but again I thought it was worth noting because I really did not enjoy it. The story is really really goofy and it doesn't really feel like it holds weight. Some people may appreciate that and some may not, but again worth noting. Now the end game in this game in my opinion is super repetitive and it, again it's not like normal Borderlands games. Also they changed the way the DLCs work and in turn it makes it a lot less valuable and offers less replayability than prior Borderlands games. The enemy variety also stands out in this game. It feels like there's a lot of repetitive enemies for some reason. And above all it truly just didn't feel as enjoyable to grind in this game as it did in Borderlands 3. Something about this game just feels less therapeutic and relaxing than normal Borderlands games, and I really don't know why. Usually it's my favorite franchise to kick back and relax to, but for some reason this game just didn't give me that same vibe. Does anyone else feel that way, or am I completely unique? Please let me know in the comments and try to keep the vibes positive, please. In conclusion, this game is not a bad game. And it feels like a Borderlands game. There's a lot of looting, a lot of leveling up, very familiar, beautiful environments, a lot of great gunplay, fun writing, lots of funny side quests. But the problem is they already took an existing formula and messed around with it a whole lot. And I truly wonder what made them make this decision. Like, I wonder if they did a lot of polling and thought that this would do really well. I wonder if there are a lot of fans that love this mesh. So again, I just kind of want to know the thought process as to why they thought D&D &D and Borderlands would work really well together. Not to say that it didn't work, but I don't think it works seamlessly. If you do love Borderlands and Dungeons and Dragons, this is an absolute must play. But if you are just a fan of Borderlands like me, I would probably hold off on this game or maybe grab it on sale. Implementing Dungeons and Dragons into a game like this is a huge task. And it, this either should have been a massive project or they should have just put this focus and used this mechanics on Borderlands 4. This kind of feels like it doesn't really compete with the prior games. I truly even feel like in 2024, Borderlands 3 is a better experience than this game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know what you think of this game. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.